Hi there. Since we shot this video, there's been a slight change of plans. On Thursday last week, Microsoft announced that they are bringing the great features of OneNote for Windows 10 and adding them to the OneNote desktop version. That'll start happening over the next 12 months, and we'll link to our video about that announcement here. Make sure that you subscribe so that you can find out about the changes to OneNote desktop as they roll out. And for the time being, things will continue on as they are with OneNote for Windows 10 being supported all the way to 2025. So just enjoy this video. On our last OneNote video, I talked about the confusing issue of which OneNote to use. Now that Microsoft have started updating OneNote desktop again, the question needs to be asked, what can it do that OneNote for Windows 10 can't? Now, don't get the wrong idea from this video. You can happily continue to use the OneNote that you prefer. As it stands in 2021, Microsoft is supporting both versions. But as development on OneNote desktop continues, we expect that the gap between the two apps will continue to close over the next couple of years. Personally, I use OneNote for Windows 10 to take notes, to write my scripts, to work on ideas, and to store articles and web clips on topics that I'm researching. But there are several limitations of OneNote for Windows 10 that occasionally force me to open up OneNote desktop. The most obvious and immediate missing feature in OneNote for Windows 10 is the ability to deal with local OneNote files. And that shouldn't seem like a major problem for people like me who work mainly from the Microsoft Cloud. I'm very happy to store my OneNote notebooks in Teams, SharePoint, and OneDrive. I get a faster and more reliable sync across my devices with OneNote for Windows 10 and the Office 365 Cloud than I ever could have using file shares on a network. That said, in OneNote Desktop, you can use file shares on a network. But the OneNote Desktop version also allows me to export .one files. Say I'm working with a customer and I want to share a copy of a OneNote notebook. I need a really simple way to package up and email or share a copy of my notebook. And with OneNote Desktop, I can go to File, then to Export, to export a OneNote file, including a page, a section, or even a whole notebook as a file that I can then share. When they receive the file, they can simply double click on it to open it up in OneNote Desktop, and they can use it however way they see fit. Over the years, we've seen many customers who are constrained by security requirements that don't allow them to use Microsoft Cloud Solutions. And OneNote Desktop allows those customers to continue to work with OneNote using a secure file storage system within their own environment. Another feature that's really lacking in OneNote for Windows 10 is direct integration with Outlook. And there are three aspects to this. The first is task management. On the home menu in OneNote Desktop, this flag icon allows you to turn a line of text or even a line of handwriting on your page immediately into an Outlook task. Now in both OneNote for Windows apps, we do have a tagging system that allows you to mark items with a to-do checkbox. But unlike that simple solution, using an Outlook flag actually generates a task that will show up in Outlook and also in the Microsoft To-Do app. In Outlook, you can even assign that task to a colleague. On the page, it acts like that simple to-do checkbox but it has added benefits that come with a task management system. The next direct Outlook integration along the home toolbar is email page. This is a super handy feature that is sorely lacking in OneNote for Windows 10 that allows me to immediately send the contents of my page as the body of an email. I've seen a lot of customers create templates in OneNote that they quickly turn into an email using this feature. And I've used this feature myself a lot for sharing support information that I've captured into OneNote. So this is a very handy feature, but you won't find anything equivalent in OneNote for Windows 10, and that's due to the constraints of the UWP platform. You could just copy and paste, but this is much easier. And the last Outlook integration is one of my favorites, and that is meeting details. This feature opens your Outlook calendar, lists all of the meetings that you have for the day, click on the meeting, grab the details, including the agenda and the attachments and the invitee list directly onto your page, ready to start writing your meeting notes. Now this feature is sort of available in OneNote for Windows 10, but it does rely on you being connected to the internet, so it's not quite the same. When I'm working on content in OneNote Desktop, I really love the full page view. Now this is unique to OneNote Desktop, although OneNote for Windows 10 has full screen mode, this is actually different. Because this full page button will fit the current OneNote window size, not the whole screen. This means that I could have two OneNote pages open side by side, in this focus mode without all of the menus and distractions. OneNote for Windows 10 only has full screen mode and that doesn't work exactly the same. Although the inking experience is a little dated in OneNote Desktop, 
When you're writing notes here, Ink has recognized this text almost instantly, making your handwritten notes searchable as soon as the ink is dry. And that's the same with pictures too. Drop a picture with text into OneNote Desktop and you can search it and extract the text instantly. On the other hand, while OneNote for Windows 10 has these features, it can take a long time for the processing to happen in the background. The last feature I miss from OneNote Desktop when I'm using OneNote for Windows 10 is the ability to easily move content between different notebooks. Putting the notebook list open on the left-hand side of OneNote Desktop allows me to expand the notebooks and see their sections even when I'm not in that notebook. That means that I could drag a page from the notebook that I'm in and drop it into a section in a notebook that I'm not currently in without fiddling around. As much as I like the navigation that's found in OneNote for Windows 10, it's much easier to move stuff around using the desktop app. In the next video, I'm going to consider the flip side. Why use OneNote for Windows 10 over OneNote Desktop? But as we mentioned at the outset, over the next couple of years, we expect this whole discussion to disappear as development steams ahead on OneNote Desktop. I know some of the folks inside of the OneNote team at Microsoft, and although I don't have any inside information, I do expect that they are working to unify the two apps while maintaining the flexibility and the distinct advantages that each app has. And in the meantime, don't be worried about switching from one app to the other. You can happily continue using OneNote for Windows 10 or OneNote Desktop if you prefer. Microsoft will continue to offer both, I suspect, until it's simply not an issue anymore. On our last video, I mentioned that we're celebrating the 20th year of OneNote over the next 12 months by releasing a free training series right here on YouTube. Trouble is, I got the dates wrong. And although OneNote was announced in 2002, it didn't really hit the market until 2003. So I guess we can't really say it's 20 until 2023. 20 years is a long time as it turns out. Anyway, I'm running with it. Over the last few years, we've created a series of videos to help our training customers to learn to use both OneNote 2016, now called Desktop, and OneNote for Windows 10. And we'll be sharing those videos here for free. So check the description below to the links that we'll leave for the training playlist that will go live on September the 1st. And make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so that you get notifications about upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and drop back next week to find out why to use OneNote for Windows 10 over OneNote Desktop.